My name is Rob Miller. I'm the health benefits consultant for the Mahoney Group. And standing next to me is Mary Hoffman. She is the account manager and the lady that knows everything about your, your account plan and your health plan and benefit plan. Right, Mary? <laughs> she is a very good resource. Um, we also have our new HR manager for the hospital, Sandy Francis. Tara Hernandez, I've seen Ophelia before. There she is, Ophelia Hernandez and Tina Lewis. And then in the far back is Robin Porter, who's been uh, with the tribe in the hospital most recently. We have two other members that are with our team today. Um, in the back, we have our pharmacy benefit manager, account manager, Amy Iden, and she just waved her hand. And then in the white shirt in the far back is Deb Padfield from Oxiant. So the pharmacy benefit manager handles all the pharmacy and prescription stuff. And then Oxiant handles all the third party administration. So they basically handle all the claims, the medical, dental, and vision claims that get sent through. The Mahoney Group, as the insurance consultant on, on the account, helps coordinate the team, makes plans, or advises on how to make plan changes if the tribe and hospital or any of the other entities within the tribe wants to make plan changes throughout the year. We also monitor uh, the claims to see how they are progressing. This year we do have a good message for everybody to hear. And the first good news is that there's going to be no increase in employee deductions. So your plan numbers were the same. And for those of you that are new employees, Mary will go through what those actual payroll deductions are depend on what type of plan and how many uh, employees or family members and dependents you have. Um, the other addition that we're going to have is in November 1st, we're going to uh, introduce First Stop Health, which is a telemedicine program that is also free of charge. So we'll start to go through that um, in a high level today and introduce it. And I think most of you also have a handout with that. Um, as we get past open enrollment, and the open enrollment process is the process where new employees and everybody else in the employee pool can add, change, or delete, or make any changes to their health plan from the previous year. So between now and the 19th, which is next Wednesday, we need the HR departments uh, for your respective divisions to be informed and notified if you intend to make those changes. Okay. So those are kind of the really high level things. First one is no employee changes in deductions. Plan has run very well this year. So we're very happy that um, the tribe was able to save some money this year over last year's plan, which is a good thing for everybody. And then we're gonna make some slight changes with the uh, First Stop Health Telemedicine program. And then there, there may be some more changes coming down the line, but that's what we're prepared to announce today. So if you remember those couple highlights, you're good to go. And be sure to talk to your HR people and make sure that you get that election form back to them. Now, for all those new employees who didn't understand what I just said, Mary's going to go through the details of the plan and what some of those questions that you might have. If you do have questions uh, during the process, just please raise your hand or shout out the question. Um, Mary is uh, very open to taking your questions and we're all here to help you the best we can so you understand this, this world of business, which is sometimes a monotonous and not so fun thing to learn. So we're here to help you and uh, thank you all for coming. Mary? Oh, Richard, I forgot. I'm sorry, Richard. I forgot to uh, introduce Richard as well. Uh, after we're done with our medical part, Richard will come up and present his uh, 408, 401k uh, plans, enhancements, changes, um, and he'll give his pitch as well. So be sure to stay after we're done with that so Richard ha can have his few minutes as well. this if you guys can't hear me I'm gonna just plug this down here if you can't hear me let me know can the back of the room hear me I usually have a loud voice I think it's from I used to be a cheerleader in high school so I can scream and I'm a great port, uh, sports fanatic I'm gonna figure this out <laughs> all right 
Um, again, I'm just going to kind of overview. As a reminder, Rob kind of already reminded you that this is your open enrollment. Basically, our point here is to try to give you guys a basic overview of your benefits without boring you to death. Um, honestly, you guys, I work with a lot of clients and a lot of tribal entities. You guys do offer a very, very comprehensive and valuable plan. Um, medical, dental, and vision elections made during this open enrollment become effective October 1st. So if you're first time enrolling or adding or dropping dependents, those changes become effective on 10-1 if you make any changes to your medical, your dental, or your vision. Um, during this open enrollment, if you currently are enrolled in the voluntary life benefit with UNAM, during this open enrollment, you can increase that benefit by $10,000 with not having to answer any health questions. If you want a first time enroll in the voluntary life um, or the voluntary short term disability to do that, you can, but you will need to fill out an enrollment form and you will need to answer health questions. The only time you're not subject to those health questions on those two benefits is when you first time in, are eligible. So after you meet your first enrollment um, eligibility waiting period. Okay. Um, and actually, you know, we encourage you guys to take this time. Uh, unfortunately, a UNAM representative is not here, but I have a good knowledge of that plans. Uh, we have Deb Padfield, like you said, from uh, Oxiant that can help extensively more with some medical, dental, and vision questions if you have it. And we have Amy from ClearScript when you have, if you have any prescription um, questions. Uh, again, you guys, who is eligible? If you are a Winneb Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska full-time employee working at least 30 hours or more per week, you're eligible. You can enroll your legal spouse, your domestic partner, and dependent children up to the age of 26. Um, again, Rob already said this is open enrollment. It runs through the 19th to give your HR departments plenty of time to get your enrollment updated and the, it being passed on to the carriers. We do ask that you turn any of your paperwork in um, on or before the 19th. Um, and again, I think we've already, not to be repetitive, again, if you're first time enrolling or making a change to coverage, you will need to fill out an Oxiant or a UNAM enrollment form over and above that election form that was handed out to most of you when you came in. Okay, again, you guys, this is your open enrollment. And because your payroll deductions are taken out pre-tax, they are subject to IRS gu guidelines, which means outside of open enrollment, you cannot make changes unless you have what's considered an IRS qualifying event. And they're listed there, obviously marriage, uh, divorce, legal separation, a domestic partnership relationship, status change, birth, adoption of a child. Obviously, if your child becomes age 26, and that's the only child you have on your plan, you'd want to drop child coverage. Um, and then, of course, unfortunate death of a spouse, child, or a qualifying event, uh, change in residence, um, obviously termination of an adoption pr proceeding or going through it, and then obviously change in spouse or domestic partners, benefits, or employment status. So if you carry your spouse at this time, and let's say he, his job, offers benefits and maybe his insurance is more affordable and that and you decide okay I don't need to cover him anymore he can go with his employer I'm going to drop him when he is eligible for those benefits that's considered a qualifying event you just need to make sure you let your HR know within 30 days of his effective date so that he can drop be dropped from your coverage or added to your coverage depending on what the situation is Um, okay, again, kind of being repetitive, I apologize. Medical, dental, and vision claims administrator is Oxiant. If you are enrolled in the medical plan, Midlands Choice Network is your contracted providers. Um, you want to try to stay within the network. If you do, your out-of-pocket is going to be less. 
Um, ClearScript is your pharmacy administrator and your mail order prescriptions are also available through Fairview Mail Service Pharmacy. Okay, I'm going to go over the benefits a little bit. This is just a brief overview, kind of like your most common benefits that we use. Um, a physician's visit. Now, there are two plans offered. Plan one is offered to those employees that are Winnebago tribal members and their dependents. Plan two is offered to all other full-time employees. Um, as you can see, plan one for the full tribal, full-time tribal employees, basically um, those employees have no out-of-pocket uh, for physicians visits, emergency room visits, or you know, basically any out-of-pocket as long as they stay in network. All other full-time employees do have a $25 copay for a primary care physician's visit, a $35 copay for a specialist visit. Outside of the office, physician's charges, surgery, you're going to be subject to a $1,000 deductible per individual, a $2,000 family deductible. What that means is if you have multiple family members, meaning more than two additional, through the whole family, you would only have to meet a $2,000 deductible. Now, on preventative care, there is a $25 copay for the preventative visit, but all other preventative visits are paid at 100%. Things that are covered underneath preventative, if you have younger children, all of their pre-preventative visits and immunizations, um, as a female, obviously, our annual physical exams, our mammograms, if when you get to be that wonderful age of 50, a routine colonoscopy as well as for a male. You guys, don't forget, males, routine physicals are covered at 100%. There's no reason not to go annually for that visit. It's no out-of-pocket on, on your side. Um, if you choose to go to an emergency room visit, it's a $200 copay if you happen to be admitted from that emergency room visit, the copay doesn't apply anymore, then the benefits fall into deductible and the coinsurance, the 70%. Um, if you go to an urgent care, it is a $35 copay per visit. All other charges are subject to the 30% after the deductible is met. So if you go to the emergency room and they take an x-ray, that x-ray is going to be billed over and above the physician's visit. That x-ray charge, if it's itemized on the bill, is going to be subject to your deductible and coinsurance. If they give you an, an injection, et cetera. Now, on that plan, too, you're out of pocket as an individual. Total in a calendar year is $5,000. Total for a family is $10,000. Are there any questions? It, if you're admitted, you would have to meet as an individual a $1,000 deductible as a non-tribal member. Then you'd be responsible for 30%. You'd be responsible for the first thousand, then 30% until your total out-of-pocket reaches the 5,000. And that would be if all services were billed as contracted providers. There are out-of-network benefits available, but. They're, and they're outlined in the overview that we handed out, as well as we have copies of your summary of benefits coverage in the back, which go into more detail. Any other questions on the benefits? And again, if you guys, if you have personal questions you don't want to ask up front, both Deb and I are in the back. Amy's there that can help with prescriptions as well. Some people don't feel comfortable asking questions out in front of everybody but we're available for that afterwards as well. Okay, if there's no questions, I'll move on. Um, a little overview on your prescriptions. Okay, you guys have the option to go to your retail pharmacy. Um, tier one and two is basically your generics. For a 30-day supply, that's a $10 copay. You can go through mail order, and you can get a 90-day supply delivered to your home for a $25 copay. Um, tier three is your preferred brand. That is a $35 copay or a $50 copay if there is an equivalent generic available and you're choosing to take the brand anyway. 
and again, a mail order is available. And as you guys notice, it's about um, two and a half of the copays, 8750 or 125. Again, always with your prescription, they're going to try to get you to take a generic if it's available, cost saving. Um, but if you're one of those individuals that like the brand, don't want to change, you do have that option available to you. <laughs> Tier four is your non-preferred brands. Again, the same situation, a $40 to $5 copay if there's a generic for the generic, uh, $60 if there's an equivalent available and you are choosing to elect the brand anyway. And again, mail order, as you guys notice, $112.50 or $150. Now, tiers five, six, and seven are your specialty medications. Um, those are primarily your higher cost drugs, injectables. And those, there is a $100 copay. Um, you must use a Fairview specialty pharmacy when filling a specialty prescription. And again, I'm going to pass off to Amy if you guys have any of those questions. If you have those prescriptions needs, um, Amy can help you even explain the pharmacy benefit, the mail order benefit a little bit more. And again, there's a website here as well as on the handout we gave you. It, you can look up where your drug falls into. If there is, maybe you're on a brand name drug. Maybe you want to check out if there's a generic available. That website will tell you that as well. Questions? I was going to wake Amy up in the back if you did. <laughs> OK. Oxiant also is your claims administrator for your dental. Okay, again, plan one pays 100%, um, but it does have a $1,500 calendar year maximum paid out per covered person, and it offers the orthodontia for dependents under the age of 19 is 100% covered up to a lifetime maximum of $1,500. That orthodontia benefit is paid over and above the $1,500 that is paid for your regular dental services. Plan two, which is available for all other full-time employees, your preventative is 100% covered, deductible waived. You do have a $25 individual deductible, a $75 family deductible. Your um, basic services are 80% after that deductible. Major services, 50%. You have, you're subject to that same calendar year max, and you have that same uh, the orthodontia benefit actually is 50% covered after up to the $1,500 maximum. Okay, and on the dental, you can go to any licensed dentist you want. There is no contract there or network there. Okay, Oxiant is also your vision claims administrator. Here again, you guys can go to any licensed vision provider you want. An eye exam, the plan's going to cover up to $75, one exam in a calendar year. Frames, lenses, contact lenses, the plan is going to reimburse up to $225 per calendar year. Um, and then a, the vision corrective surgery is not covered underneath your plan. Any questions on vision? Okay. Am I boring you guys? Sorry. The fun part, you guys can all wake up here in case you don't remember what's coming out of your paycheck. Uh, <laughs> we have it broke down here. Um, as Rob already said, there's no increases, which is always a good thing to hear. Um, Bi-weekly payroll deductions, that's what these calculations are based on. If there's any divisions that are not bi-weekly, I don't think so in that. But now medical, dental, and vision, if an employee only, you can see is 59.33, employee plus one, 127.49, and then employee plus family cost. Now, it is also broke down. If you want medical only, dental only, or vision only, it's not an a la carte thing. You can pick one or the other. You can waive the others if that's your choice. You can enroll medical only, employee only, cover your family on dental and vision if you want. Any questions on that? Can everybody see those costs? I think they're also in your flyer. OK, now we're going to go on to the UNAM benefits. Um, benefits that are paid 100% by the Winnebago Tribe of Nebraska is long-term disability. You know, a long-term disability and 
your employer paid term life and accidental death and dismemberment. Those are paid 100%. Your employer paid life with the matching AD&D. Again, available employees working 30 hours per week. The basic benefit is $50,000. So being just a full-time employee, if something were to happen to you, you were to pass, your, whoever your beneficiary is would get a, a payment out of $50,000. If you were to die in an accident, this plan would pay $50,000 for your loss of life, an additional $50,000 because of the accident and that. Um, now you can also elect spousal coverage up to $7,000 and children coverage up to $4,000 and that is employer paid. So if you have dependents and you don't have them underneath that coverage, I think last year when we first time offered this and when you first time eligible we think they bring that up to you to see if you will sign up but if for some reason you don't have that benefit and you want to, we'll need to have you fill out a UNAM enrollment form so it can be adjusted. Now the one thing on this employer paid life benefit is the age reduction. When we reach the age of 65, our benefit is reduced down to 65% of the benefit or a 35% reduction. When you reach the age of 70 and if you're still a full-time employee, it's a 50%. So the math's a little easier in my head right now, that'd be 25,000. So if that were to happen, and of course, if you reach the age of 75 and you're still full-time working, bless your soul, um, unfortunately, the benefit pays out at 25%. Now, additional features that UNUM does offer, and we, unfortunately, we don't have the flyers right now, but your HR can hand them out. Uh, life planning, financial and legal, and resources as far as counseling services, employee, empl employee assistant program are also offered by UNUM. And then there's an accelerated benefit. What the accelerated benefit is um, on your life insurance is if you are diagnosed with a terminal diagnosis, you can apply for that accelerated benefit and actually get 75% of that 50% paid out before you actually die. Um, known some people to do that and actually take trips, you know, enjoy their last few days with their family and that. Um, the unfortunate thing is if you go through and you don't die after you get that benefit, you don't get to reuse the benefit again. It's basically once that life benefit pays out in some form, it's not going to pay out again. Okay, um, this is frequently asked questions. As you can see, at what age does my child become ineligible? Okay, on the dependent coverage, your child's coverage does end at the age of 19 or 26 if they are a full-time student. Um, obviously, if you have a dependent covered underneath your child life and they get married, that would be um, a reason to lose the coverage. And I'm trying to read this. Or, um, but then again, she may get an extension if that is due to a disability or a handicap. Um, what do I need to do? Uh, when your child reaches this age, you want to contact your HR. So again, so that the proper paperwork can be filled out. Um, does UNAM automatically make changes when my child reaches this age? No, it is your responsibility to notify the HR department to notify UNUM to change that benefit. Um, will my premium be deduct, deduct affected, excuse me? Um, on the employer paid dependent care, obviously you don't pay for that. But yes, if you choose voluntary life benefits and you're paying for your spouse or dependent and something happens, again, yes, your premium would be affected. Um, and then can my children still receive benefits if I don't remove them as long as I still pay the premium? No. Once they reach that age limit, they're no longer eligible for the benefit. Okay, your employer paid long-term disability, again, available for employees that work at least 30 hours per week. How does it pay out? It pays out 60% of your monthly earnings up to a maximum of $10,000.
The elimination period for long-term disability means it's a 90-day waiting period. So if your last day of work, if you did not elect the voluntary short-term disability, you have to be basically not full-time employee for 90 days before the long-term benefit kicks in. Okay, it pays up to Social Security retirement age. And as we know, depending on what age we are, that can be anywhere 65, 67, 69, they seem to keep raising it on us. Um, definition of disability, the two-year owner occupation. The plan documents go into a little bit more detail on this, but basically if you are no longer disabled, um, they do try to match up, can you do a job you know, based on your disability and that. Um, Pre-existing. Now, on the long-term disability, if you are diagnosed for a condition in the three months before you became eligible for the plan, you have to be on the plan at least 12 months for it to pay out. If a condition is diagnosed after your effective date on the plan, you're fine. It's going to pay out no problem. Is a guaranteed issue? Yes. Regardless what your health issues are, as a full-time employee, the long-term disability is a benefit payable to you. And additional benefits on this is emergency medical travel assistance services. Again, there's a flyer. Sorry, we didn't, a little confusion on the getting the unum paperwork here. But uh, basically what it does, if you're traveling, you know, either within the United States or even outside of the United States, there's an 800 number on that flyer that you can call to get assistance on your um, medical needs. And it even can help you get transportation back to the United States if you're out of the country, et cetera. Oh, here it is. I didn't know I had a little flyer in here. But again, it tells you for travel 100 miles or more from home, in or out of the country, there's 24 hour phone access. I think I covered it there. Okay, term life insurance. It's kind of a little story here, you know, working mom who wears a lot of hats and that, and to her family, she's a nurse, teacher, counselor, and baker. You know, again, you never know when that extra voluntary life. I'm trying to find the flyer here so I have to quit looking back there and I can not read it all the way. <laughs> I think I got this backwards, but anyway. Um, again, you guys, voluntary life benefit. If you're first time enrolled, I know last year when we, we did some of the meetings and when I came out and did some of the hospital meetings earlier this year, we tried to say, you know, it's an added out of pocket for you. But um, if you can even afford when you start that $10,000, each year you can increase it by $10,000. And that, and it is a benefit that, you know, unfortunately voluntary life isn't something we get to use. It's for our uh, family and our dependents. So if you are the sole owner or the sole bread maker, or you know, you know that something could happen, that if something happened to you and you could no longer be around to help bring home a paycheck, it's definitely a benefit to consider. I'm not gonna. How it works, basically, um, again, you still have to work 30 hours per week. Um, now, when you were first time eligible, you could elect voluntary life benefits up to these maximums, up to the guaranteed issue amount, without answering any health questions. If you did not elect it when you first were eligible and want to enroll in it now, you can enroll, request it, um, but you do need to fill out a health questionnaire. Just the same thing if the first time you enrolled yourself but not your spouse. Now you're thinking, oh, maybe I want to try to get at least $10,000 on my spouse. If you have at least $10,000, you can elect that coverage for your spouse, but you would need to fill out, again, a health questionnaire. And I actually did bring some of those. Um, but as you can see, as the benefits go down, this benefit as well has the age reductions applied to it. I think I'm boring a lot of you, so I'll kind of pick it up. Any questions on the voluntary term life? Okay. Okay, your voluntary short-term disability. What would you do if your paycheck stopped tomorrow? You know, how would you pay your bills? And that. 
Again, this is an elective benefit. When you were first eligible, you could enroll with no health questions, no questions. It is open enrollment. If you want to apply for it, you will need to fill out health questions. If you're approved, again, the, the payroll deductions would start the first of the month following your approval. Um, how does it pay? That's all everybody wants to know. Oh, there's another little flyer on why you might need short-term disability. Okay. Again, it pays 60% of your weekly earnings to a maximum of $1,000 per week. Now, there is a 14-day waiting period for this benefit to start. So counting 14 days from the last day of actively at work, the benefit would be eligible. It pays up to 11 weeks, which matches right up into that long-term disability start date. Um, it's guaranteed issue if you're approved, and maternity benefits are also included. So if you are planning on getting pregnant, you can't be pregnant when you first time enroll, because otherwise it would be pre-existing, because this does have a pre-existing benefit as well. Um, kind of goes over some of it, what I already told you, if you become disabled, there is a maximum amount of time you can receive benefits for the covered disability. It's 11 weeks. You know, the waiting period, the first day of covered disability and the date you can begin to accrue your disability benefits. It's at 14 days. And then it pays the 60%. And then it kind of explains here on the pre-existing. Again, there's that still if you were diagnosed the three months before you became eligible you have to be on the plan for 12 months before the short-term disability will pay out. Why buy it? Well, number one, it's, it is a little bit, it is competitive rates, the convenience of payroll deductions, and it's also a valuable benefit when you live, well, I hate to say you're not even live paycheck to paycheck, but to be without a paycheck, it can cause some financial problems sometimes. Okay, you guys, any questions on the benefits before we kind of finalize it? It is based on your age. Um, we can get you the flyers for it and the cost for it. Um, I will say the older we are, the more expensive it is, but it's based on your age and then on the disability, it also based on the benefit you want to elect because you can choose in that. Are you with the hospital? Okay, you might follow up. Sandy can help you get that paperwork for the disability. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Um, reminder, you guys, this is open enrollment. When do you have to have your forms in by? When are the benefits effective? can't hear you, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Um, if you are making no changes at all, all your HR needs back is that election form. If you are making changes to medical, dental, or vision, you need to fill out an oxyant enrollment form. If you want to make any changes to your voluntary life or voluntary short-term disability, you need to fill out a UNUM form. Guys, the other big thing, remember your beneficiary information. If you've had a life-changing event, that person that you wrote down as your life beneficiary is no longer in your life, you want to make sure that form is updated with your HR. If something were to happen to you, whatever name is on that form in your HR department gets your life benefit. Okay, that's a legal document. You can change it any time throughout the year. Just if something happens there, Remember to fill that form out and turn it into your appropriate HR department and they'll keep it in your file. Okay, I think I summarized that. Questions? Um, we just up here again put the, uh, sorry Robin's still up here, but uh, the HR different departments. A uh, little bit of change, Sandy now is with the hospital, Angie is your new HR contact for the host, or for the college, if anybody's here from the college. Ophelia is still here for the tribe. I think Tara and Tina are back there too. 
and that, but all their contact information is here as well as it's on your appropriate overview sheet. And thank you very much. Um, as you guys walk out, uh, ClearScript did bring some hand sanitizers, some little pill boxes if you want. There's additional forms back there, and I don't take off. Sorry, Richard, I didn't mean to cut you. There's Richard in the back. That will come down. And uh, I work with the tribe on the 401k plan. I actually helped the tribe establish and formulate their, their uh, retirement plan back at the end of 2009, beginning of 2010. And as you can kind of see from the, the uh, web page that I brought up, John Hancock happens to be the firm that basically administrates or oversees the assets of the plan. Uh, they make available to you a variety of investments that are uh, from many different carriers or companies. Uh, and so we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I, started one, I wanted to just start talking a little bit about planning. Now, um, in, in my work, I'm known as a certified financial planning practitioner. I hold a certified financial uh, planning license. And so I like to help people think about what they want to accomplish with their life with regard to the assets that they're trying to build and what kind of income they want to have in retirement. But think about that word plan. I think that there's a good chance that uh, Mary or Rob might have said the word plan a time or two because you have a group major medical plan that you can enroll in. Most of you probably are in it. Uh, you have a life insurance plan that you can purchase. You have short and long-term disability plans that you can be enrolled in. So think about that word plan. What does it mean? It means you got a plan because if you get sick or you get hurt, you got a plan on how you're going to deal with all those bills. You might have a deductible, you might have some co-pays and co-insurance, but the insurance company is going to take care of everything above and beyond that. That's a plan. What happens if you die? You might have a plan for that. There's X amount of dollars that I've set aside in the form of insurance. I've got a plan. Well, what about your retirement? I handed out a single page document and uh, what's it say on the front? It says, um, do you have a plan for your retirement? So what is your plan for retirement? It's a, rhetorical question, you don't have to answer that right this second, but um, do you have a plan? Well, a lot of folks would say, well, I, I am, you know, eligible for Social Security or will be eligible for Social Security benefits at some point. Okay, that's part of your plan, but I don't think it's probably in and of itself a sufficient plan for your retirement. And you'd probably agree with that. Everybody says when I ask them about Social Security, what's going to happen to Social Security by the time you and I retire? They always say either something like, oh, I don't even know if it'll be there for me, or it probably won't be as good as it is now. And as good as it is now, it's not nearly good enough to just retire on nothing but Social Security. You've got to have something to go with it. You've got to have a plan. And thus it was that 10 years ago, 12 years ago, whatever it was now, let's see, eight, nine years ago, the, um, the uh, Tribal Council really did want to establish a 401k plan. And now, nine years later, we've got about five and a half million dollars in the plan, which is good. But I'll tell you, collectively, the, the several hundred employees of the tribe are going to need a whole lot more money than that to retire on. But it's available to you with a generous match. So with regard to this idea of a plan, what should your plan be? Well, let me boil it down to you real simple. You should be thinking about, number one, when you retire, how much income will you need? Now, that's a very difficult question to answer for some people, especially if you're 40 years away from retirement. But think about it in today dollars. How much money would I like to retire on if I were you know, debt free or had everything mostly paid for? How much income would I need? Now, that's a number you can come up with. Now, once you know what that number is, you can also say, yes, I do have Social Security. And you can go to, you might want to write this down, socialsecurity.gov, socialsecurity.gov. There, you can register using your social security number for a username and a password, and it will show you once you're in there a projection of what your retirement benefit will be, for example, at age 67, and you can play with it. It's got some abilities to give you some projections. So now we're working towards a plan. Number one, you know how much money you think you'd like to have. Number two, you kind of know how much social security is going to provide for that. Now you know how much you're going to have to provide, and if you start off at that level, knowing how much monthly income you need beyond and above Social Security, then you can go to step two, which is, well, how much money do I have to have in retirement savings to provide myself with that extra, let's say, $1,200 a month? Using internet tools, time value of money calculators that are easy to look up on the internet, you can figure that out, but also this website that I'm going to show you here in a second can do the same. Then, 
Once you've arrived at a belief that says, look, I need $432,000 in 38 years when I retire, well, how much do I need to be saving now to get there? You'll have to make an assumption about how much money you're going to, you know, what kind of return you're going to get on your assets, 6%, 7%, 8%. But nonetheless, that's a plan, and you can do it. Now, if that sounds a little bit uh, daunting, um, John Hancock has tried to make it easy for you. And uh, let's see, I'll just show you real quick what it looks like. You go to this website, which is uh, J, J, jhancockpensions.com. It's right here on this flyer that I gave you. And uh, let's see, E-A-S-T-O-2, password, J-H, at one, two, three, four, five. I think I got it. Sign me in. And Shazam, oh, well, the first thing it might do is give you a chance to enter your mobile number once you're logged in. But uh, you'll notice what I did is I skipped right to the point of entering a username and password, which means you've registered, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. Real easy. Uh, but at any rate, um, it, it starts off with just a discussion about what does my future retirement look like. Now, here's an interesting little thing. This little box up here, it's uh, at some point got a deal where if you want to upload a motivational picture of what retirement means to you, whatever that may be, is there a, a place you want to live, a picture of that place, you know, that city or that, that, that place? Uh, is there something you want to do as a hobby? Put a picture of it up there, is, and, and you can actually add that to the website. Uh, but in the, in the tool uh, where it says, let's get started, it starts off by asking you a few questions about yourself, how you'd like to spend time in retirement, and how you feel uh, about investing your contributions, how much risk you're comfortable with, and things like that. This tool will walk you step by step through a plan and help you develop one. Now, once you've decided to sign up, know this, that when you put money into the plan, the tribe adds money to it. They give you a match contribution. So what they do is every time you put in a dollar, they add 75 cents. And they do that on up to 4% of your contributions. So if you put in four, you're going to collect the equivalent of three more. Now you're saving 7% of your income. Now, having a plan makes a whole lot of sense, but some folks just for whatever reason don't feel comfortable doing that. How about this? A simple rule of thumb is that if you want to retire comfortably, you need to string together a good 20 to 30 years where you're going to be saving 10% of your income and letting it grow. That will very, very likely as a rule of thumb, get you very close to this kind of a goal setting action. Uh, well, if you put in 7% and the tribe put in three, that would be 10 and you'd be saving 10% of your income. So just a couple of things to think about there. Now, next question. Does that sound good? The idea of preparing for retirement. Does it sound good having the tribe actually pay you 3% of your comp as a contribution towards your retirement, which in order to get that, you got to be willing to contribute 4% of your, that sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Would you like to sign up if you're not signed up? How do I do that? Well, I'm going to make it real easy for you. One simple way that you can sign up is by simply going to this website. Um, it's, it's a website a little bit different from this one. This one's for planning. It's jhgoenroll, if you want to write that down. So John Hancock, jhgoenroll.com. Now, I'm going to give you a handout if you do want to sign up that has all this information in it. But once you get there, you'll need your contract number, which is 130374. Again, 130374. And an enrollment access number specific to the uh, governmental 401k plan, which is 386415. You'll need those two numbers. And I'll hand this out for anyone who wants it because it's, it's in here. Uh, you can even just use a scanner and do a QR code to get to the same website. So they try to make it really easy. Once you are there, you would be able to say, here's how much money I want to save. Here's what I think I'd like to invest in. Boom, submit. You can also print, and you will need to do so, you will need to print a beneficiary form and turn that into your HR department. Unfortunately, the uh, beneficiary form does not electronically transmit along with the rest of the data. So there's one way you could sign up electronically. Or how about good old pen and paper? Well, that's available too. And so if you'd rather not enroll electronically, we'll be happy to have you fill out the papers to do so. They're here in the book. There's a nice big round tab that says go enroll. 
It tells you how to do it if you want to do it online, but it also gives you the forms you need if you want to enroll on paper. You put in your name, your social security number, your date of birth. I want to contribute, and you write in the percent you want to contribute, and then you can either say, I'll pick my investment options later, just get me started, or I'll pick my investment options now. It gives you that choice, and the online version does the exact same thing. And yes, the beneficiary form that you do need is also in this kit. And so we've got two ways for you to do it. Now, if you would like, um, I will stick around, and if you would like to sit down and actually ans ask some questions, fine. Um, I'll be happy to do that. I'll be happy to help you enroll. And in fact, if there were a number of you who wanted to, to enroll and just walk through the enrollment forms as a group exercise, we could do that as well. So uh, I'll be here for the whole, the whole day, basically, till 4 o'clock, so um, I'm happy to help with that. But bottom line is, you know, when it comes to financial planning and the act of trying to be prepared for things you do expect to happen and things that you don't expect to happen necessarily, I always tell people, you need the right insurance. You need health insurance. You need some life insurance if you've got people counting on you. You need some disability insurance if it is, in fact, a situation where you have to have the income that you're earning. And I think that's probably the case with most of us. But you're also going to have to plan for the future, such as, how am I going to retire? Um, and, and this is part of a holistic financial planning package that the, the tribe has made available to you. So again, my name is Richard. I'll stick around. And uh, I'm going to hand out for anyone who does want a kit, just raise your hand. I'll hand it out right this second. And then, like I said, we'll stick around. Thank you, Richard. While Richard's handing those out, there was a form that we gave you as well, which was in the First Stop Health uh, document. Is in, you should have it. And that information and more details will be coming over the next couple of weeks, but the effective date will be November 1st. So again, thank you all for your attentiveness and coming this morning. And Mary, Deb, and Amy are in the back, as well as Richard, or I'll be up this uh, in the front here. If you have any questions, please come to us or go to your HR managers as well. Does anybody have any questions before we, uh, we let you run? Correct. It's totally separate from the plan. It is a free service. And on the back of the plan, it, it lists some of the most common uh, uses for it. So again, it's free. If you live out in the country and you don't want to go into a doctor, the, you don't want to go through a uh, urgency, urgent care situation or whatever, and you just need to talk to somebody, if you have a cell phone, there will be an app that is, becomes available. You can actually talk to a, a doctor on the app. Um, or if you just have generic questions, you can uh, do it via telephone call. But we'll give you more details. Um, we're going to need to get some information from the HR departments to build the database and everything, and then that will be rolled out November 1st. Does that help your question? Yes. 